Yo, what up you guys? It's your boy the Kryptonian saying, bringing you a review for One Piece Chapter 209. And I gotta say this, man. I love how when this chapter opens up, you see just the blowback of the explosion, okay? It is so powerful, even though it is that high up, that they're still feeling it on the ground. And Tashigi and her men, they're knocked on their asses, okay? And what we see immediately after that is Tashigi's like, hmm... Captain Smoker did say that I'm supposed to pay attention to this shit because if something happens here, one of the things that we're going to see is the course that history takes. And I like that because a few chapters back, which I left out because I didn't think there was particularly anything, uh, I didn't think it was particularly anything important. Yes, those guys uh, said, oh, we don't know who Baruch Works are. Uh, obviously, that's bullshit, but we don't know who they are, and Tsushigi takes them out, okay? And I felt like that would be something to get brought back later, and that's exactly what happens, because Tsushigi is remembering. So now we just have the countrymen, the people of Alabasta fighting each other, because I think that those two were the last of the Boric Works members. But the thing is, is Tsushigi is watching, and the Civil War is still going on, and at this point, Nami is telling Usopp and Sanji and the rest of them, like, look, man, you got to fucking do something. Kick them, punch them, stop them, do something. And Vivi the whole time is saying, stop shouting, uh, not, not stop shouting, stop fighting, stop fighting, stop fighting. And just as she's saying that, I like how the panels just bleed right over into Luffy fighting Crocodile. Very good contrast by Oda. That was, that was very nice. Very nice to read that because you're getting the whole thing of the fighting has to stop. And yet Luffy is fighting for the future of the country. Really good. And the thing about this is Luffy's character indirectly gets character development through Crocodile. And what I'm referring to is the fact that after Luffy lands a series of combos and he's got this really good one where he just brings down the fist on the side of Crocodile's head. That was pretty damn good. But, you know, he lands a few combos and as Luffy's pummeling his ass, Crocodile's thinking to himself, why isn't the Scorpion Poison working on him? And then the other thing he's thinking is the first time he heard of the name Luffy. And he's like, Miss Miss uh, Valentine, Mr. Five there defeated? The fuck? The fuck is a Luffy? Like, you could just tell, okay? Somebody let me know now, okay? Just thinking off top, is there an abridged version of One Piece? That would be fucking awesome if Team Four Star did that. Because they could have some fun with that shit, man. Because just how uh, uh, Vegeta in that version says, the fuck is a condom? Like, I was thinking, the fuck is a Luffy? And I was thinking of the Team Four Star version, like, oh, shit. So, getting back on track, right? I don't want to go off on that. But the thing about this is, is I really love the fact that he's thinking back to when he first heard of Luffy's name and the bounty was so small. And if I'm not mistaken, I believe that they didn't even think that Luffy was the uh, captain of the crew. So that was pretty damn cool, man. I like that one right there. I thought that was pretty cool because he's proven his merits. And that's when Crocodile, as he's launched up into the air, one of the things that we see, he's got that huge sand attack that he used before that fucking split everything. He's got two of those damn things coming down at Luffy. And Luffy splits through that shit. And it looks like he's using a gum gum gatling uh, gun because it's a whole bunch of punches going through. He's pummeling Crocodile against the roof of the uh, of the place they're in. And Crocodile's body just shoots straight up into the air. And this is something I thought was really cool. I know that Hiro Mashima is very inspired by One Piece, okay? That's something I saw when I read one of the interviews that One Piece is one of the mangas that he is inspired by. And if you look at how when Luffy finished someone off and how uh, uh, Natsu finishes somebody off, the facial expressions are kind of the same and they're usually finished off in some major one-shot way. And it looks like this might actually be how uh, Crocodile's taken out. And if Crocodile does fall here, I have no problem with it simply for the fact that there's still conflict here. And the main antagonist of this arc moves from Crocodile to the actual people of Alabasta themselves because they're fighting against them. Uh, themselves. And I really feel like this is an opportunity for Phoebe and Koza's stories to kind of intersect to the point where what we're able to see is them working together to unite the country. So this is really key. That's a form of conflict in itself. Even though they're actually fighting, one of the things I try to stress when I do these chapter reviews and look at it from a craft perspective is you don't necessarily need fighting even in a battle shown and to have conflict so that was pretty cool man that was pretty cool my chapter question for you guys is 
what do you think? Or what did you think Toshigi was thinking as she saw the people were continuing to fight and as she was thinking about what uh, Cap Smoker said. So with that being said, if you like anything I had to say, hit that like button, comment, rate, subscribe, and share. I'll greatly appreciate it. As always, thanks for watching, guys. Have an awesome day.